Hey guys, Weekend Motor here with a uh, video today. I wanted to step through the process of doing an update to the dashboard. So this console is actually a customer console. I've had it done and on the shelf for a little while. So when, now that it's been ordered, there's actually been a dashboard update that's come out since I completed this console. So uh, I definitely want to update it before I ship it out to the customer. So you can see the nice fast boot times, the blue LEDs, all that sort of stuff. I'm just doing this to demonstrate to you that the console is in fact on the older 17502 dashboard real quick. And then I'm going to walk you end to end through the entire process of doing the dashboard update. So you can see we're still loading into Freestyle Dash here. What I'm going to do is go into the Utilities and File Manager down to the hard drive. I'm going to launch Dash Launch real fast. In the lower right there you can see where it says Kernel 17502. Uh, but then also I'm just going to bounce out to the uh, stock dash real fast and uh, confirm that for you as well there. So settings, console settings, you can see that we're on 17502. Alright, so what do we need to do in order to get onto the new dashboard? Um, I'm going to make the assumption for this video that you do not have good NAND backups. If you had good NAND backups, uh, NAND dump 1, NAND dump 2, or UPD flash dot bin, um, you could just kind of skip the obtaining the, the dump part. But I want to cover it because it seems like this is the part where people end up bricking their consoles and needing my unbrick service more often. So you notice I got the little USB here. First thing I'm going to do is just insert that USB into my computer. So uh, USB into the computer. Uh, in the download links section for this video, you're going to see I'm going to put in download links for the simple NAND flasher version 1.2. The reason that I'm using simple NAND flasher version 1.2 is because this will work on both Coronas and Trinities and then all fat variants. So um, not only can you do 4 gig uh, Corona motherboards, but you can do every other type as well. So you'll download the file and then I'm just going to open up my USB drive here. So I've got my USB drive and uh, I'm going to delete these two folders because they they wouldn't be there preemptively on your USB, right? Uh, and then it's pretty straightforward. The file that you downloaded is the simple NAND file. So you double click it to open it up and there's the simple 360 NAND flasher folder within that. Uh, so all you need to do is click and drag that right over to your USB. Let it go and it will copy over and now we've got that with a default.xex inside of it. So now we're done preparing our USB, right? So I can go ahead and right click on it, hit eject. That's going to make it so that um, I can pop back over, remove the USB, right? So then now I'm going to insert the same USB into the console and uh, on the game capture side, now that I'm in the stock dashboard, uh, what I'll do is I'll browse over to the games menu. I've got XEX menu here, so I'm going to use that to launch it. Uh, so now that we're in XEX menu, I'm going to hit right bumper, go to the USB 0. You can see that simple NAND flasher. I'm going to click A, and then there's the default.xex inside of it. I'm just going to click A again to launch that. So now we're launching um, simple NAND flasher, so it says detected NAND. Press X if you want to dump your NAND. Anything else, your application will close. Well, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to dump the NAND. So on my controller, with nothing else going on, I've actually set it down. Um, I've actually set the controller just down on the counter, right? And uh, I'm just going to hit X and then wait. So it's going, reading the NAND, it gives me a percentage process here. So it's going to town reading uh, the flash dump dot bin is what it's going to name the output for it. So we'll give this a few moments. Maybe I'll speed up this portion of the video to let that finish. All right, so now that the NAND dump has completed, it just gives us a key for press any button to exit. I'm going to go ahead and just press a button on the controller and uh, it's going to do its default dash launch action, which is still restart into freestyle. I'm actually at this point just going to go ahead and power down the console. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn it off. 
and then remove my USB. All right, so I just removed the USB from the uh, the computer, uh, excuse me, from the Xbox. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is reinsert that into the computer here. Um, and then now that the uh, USB is back in the PC, we can pop over and load the flash dump dot bin into our JRunner application. So also in the uh, the comments for this video, I will put uh, a link to the version of JRunner that I built. Uh, or I just inserted the files with 17511 dashboard. So what we can do here is we load source, and then what I'm going to do is browse to my USB drive. I'm going to go into the simple NAND flasher folder, and now instead of only a default.xex, there's also a flash dump.bin. Yeah, you can actually only see one. There you go. So if I hit all files, you can see there's that default.xex that we saw in there before. There's the log. But there's the flash dump dot bin. That's the file that we dumped, or the NAND that we dumped, right? So we've got that loaded up, uh, but unfortunately, checking out here, we don't have the CPU key populated. Now, assuming, again, that you had backups, uh, whatever, you might know your CPU key. Uh, this video, I'm trying to show you what you would do if you didn't know the CPU key. So to do that, what we need to do is actually obtain our CPU key from Zell. So I've got a little Ethernet cable laying here. Um, so that I can put this thing on a network uh, and be lazy and not have to type out the uh, CPU key. But you could totally um, just boot it and write it down or type it out. It's only uh, like 30, 32 characters. It's not that huge of a deal. But So now I just inserted my Ethernet cable into my console. And rather than boot it using the power button here, I'm going to boot it by pressing the eject button. Now by pressing the eject button, when the console boots, it's going to boot up into Zell. And Zell is kind of the magical Linux backend hack thing that gives us our CPU key. So in just a few moments here, when we get a successful glitch, there we go. Uh, when we pop over to the, uh, the capture, um, Zell is going to come up. And at, at this first part where it says requesting DHCP and you see success, that just means that I... Uh, I have a network connected to it and it recognized that. At the very end when it spits all the way down to the bottom, the biggest thing that I care about here is that that network config where it says 192.168.1.155, right? So what I'll do is pop back over into JRunner. My Xbox is still running. You can see here, it, it, you know, it hasn't been touched, so it's still going. Uh, in JRunner, we know that that last uh, 192.168.1. And then it was 155. And then I'm going to click the Get CPU Key button. So all that did was suck in the CPU key from Zell. So now I don't actually need the Xbox running any longer. So I can go ahead and power that off. And uh, if we wanted, or now we, we're, we've got everything that we need we've got a, a dump, we've got our CPU key, uh, we need to set up our settings. So this console was a. Uh, slim, so it's always glitched to, and then it did have the CR4 speed up, so we are going to need to do the uh, glitch to CR4 speed up, and then we'll just click create XE build image, and it's on dash 17511, so it's going to go through some stuff down here in the log, and at the end spit out initializing upd flash dot bin, and what you're also going to see here is this source file now has changed so that at the very end it's got the serial number of the console folder and then upd flash dot bin so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this show working folder button it's gonna open up the folder that has my upd flash dot bin in it I'm going to right click on that I'm gonna copy it I'm gonna go to my USB drive I'm gonna go into the simple NAND flasher folder and I'm gonna paste that file into there so now I have my flash dump dot bin but I also have the UPD flash.bin, which is the file I just created with the updated dashboard. So now I can go ahead and eject my disk and then uh, physically remove it from the computer, insert it into the console, and then go ahead and power it back up. So notice this time that I powered it on using the regular power button, right? So 
So the console is booting into its normal sort of dashboard, whatever, uh, not into Zelle. And uh, some of you might be questioning that know a little more at this point, why am I not flashing it back via Zelle? Remember, this time I'm trying to make it kind of a universal tutorial. Flashing it back via Zelle is not possible for Corona motherboards, so therefore I'm trying to follow the one procedure that's possible for all motherboard types. So we booted directly into Freestyle Dash. We're still on the old dashboard. We haven't done anything here. Uh, what I'm going to do is use the Utilities and File Manager within Freestyle to browse to my USB, to browse to the simple NAND flasher, and then finally, once again, to launch that default.xex. So you can see both those files that we put on here, the flash dump that we dumped before, the UPD flash that we created on our computer. But what I'm going to do is highlight the default.xex and press A. So that's going to launch us into uh, free or for uh, simple NAND flasher. And, and we get pretty straightforward options. Press A if you want to flash your NAND. Press B if you want to safe flash your NAND, which actually performs a dump and then writes it. Or press X if you just want to dump. Well, in our case, we already did our dump, right? So we already r got a copy of what was on there. So we don't really need B or X options because those include doing another dump or another copy of what was on the NAND. So what we want to do is press A to flash the NAND. So I'm going to do that on the controller. I'm just going to press A. And it says, uh, press start to flash your NAND or press anything else to exit. So I'm going to go ahead and press start on the controller. And now it's going to town. It's going to go ahead and, and flash that UPD flash.bin. You can see right there where it says game slash UPD flash.bin. Uh, and then it's going to write that out and give us kind of a percentage process as it goes through. All right, now when this hits 100%, uh, I believe it's actually going to go ahead and shut down the console for us. So it said it's completed it, uh, shutting down 54321, and then it turns off the console. If we actually uh, pop back over, you can see the light's gone off and it's done. So what I can do now is actually remove the USB. And what I like to do personally is to power cycle the console. So I remove the power plug, reinsert the power plug. I'm going to go ahead and take the network cable out as well because there's no reason that I need that anymore. And uh, then power the console back up. So with the power button, we should get a normal dashboard sort of experience. Um, now our default boot into freestyle may not carry over here, but we just got a boot. Um, the capture is uh, coming up here, and I'll demonstrate for you that we are now on 17511. So go back over to settings, console settings, system info. There we go. We are in dashboard 17511. Now, a couple of things uh, to note here. This is a console with a brick proof upgrade. It means it comes with this little NAND reader writer. You've got the uh, little cable hanging off the side. You totally could have read and written the NAND via this. But I made a very conscious choice not to do that because there's really no advantage to doing it via hardware when you can accomplish it via software. The whole point of the hardware in this, in this case is so that if you mess up the software, you made a bad selection in your JRunner when you built your NAND, uh, and you basically have bricked your console so the software option doesn't work anymore, then use the programmer to recover. But there's really no need uh, to use the programmer for everything there. So, uh, yeah, that's how you can update every console type, including Corona 4 gig NANDs, using simple NAND flasher uh, and JRunner to build updated NANDs and get back to the, the latest dashboard. Thanks for watching.